Good afternoon once again. Um, today is modern dating. What are your dating standards? And as a warning, so we're going to go deep. Um, hi, if you want to get to that, let me get introduce myself. My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, and I help strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And every day I do these talks, 5 p.m. Pacific time, in case you're wondering, um, called Messages for the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. And this is number 414. Um, <laughs> my friend says she's something special for 420. We'll see what happens then. I'm not in that arena, so we'll see. But anyway, today's number 414. And the topic, as mentioned at the top of the recording, is modern dating. What are your dating standards? And again, we are going to go deep. At least that's the intention, so we'll see what happens. So first of all, thanks for joining me if you're watching live and you're watching the replay, um, or if you're watching it on YouTube in the replay, or if you're listening on my podcast version afterwards, either one. So here it is. So this, I'm actually going to start with some things happened last night, and then also something to happen today, because I want to conflate some things together, but also to really create some useful information, and some insights, and some self-revealing as it were, as well. So it could be interesting. <laughs> so thanks for being with me. Last night I was at my friend Catherine Alts, uh, she does a, does a monthly talk through um, a matchmaking service and she was talking about the dating mistakes and one thing she brought up which really rang true for me and I'm, I'm going as an attendee because I'm always learning and discovering new things and she was talking about how we all have our um, rules and judgments about dating, the standards we want, like she's talking to some of the women about how are some of the women there and this may be true for some of you watching as well that you know, if the man doesn't have more, doesn't make more money than you, if and if you're making a look at the amount of money, he's going to make even more money than you to compete. Or if, and it's funny because I saw a friend there who's pretty fit. She exercises all the time. She's very athletic, and like if he can't give up with her, she's not interested. So the standards, and that's one level, which is, well, actually, it's two levels. It's a financial level, and it's also an emotional level too. I mean, a, a, um, a health level too. So the standards you have for relationships which can include those things called red flags and, and green flags, or as, um, as Catherine said last night, yellow flags and stop signs, which are also pretty useful to use as, as labeling for how we choose to date or not date. So that's one part. The second piece was, I, if, you been, if you're watching or looking at my Facebook wall the last three or four days, I've been posting these tweets I've been finding online that I think most of the time are very funny or certainly provocative about dating, and I'm calling them modern dating, and then I put them in quotes because they're tweets that I find online. And one I put on today, which I thought was amusing, actually it speaks for me in a certain way, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to qualify this in a moment with my own self-revealing, um, that the, 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 meme, the meme or the quote from, tweet, from Twitter was, someone should offer an online course for people, sorry, someone should offer, a, a, now I can't remember what it said, Someone should offer a dating course for people to know the difference between your Y-O-U-R and your Y-O-U apostrophe R-E. It got a lot of response, that quote that posted. And now, bear in mind a couple of things. You may have guessed I'm English, and, 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 and I've got to be careful I say this, but the English education system is pretty damn good. Well, it used to be when I was a kid. I don't know about nowadays, but it was pretty good back then. And so I, I, I grew up with a very, even in junior school, a very clear understanding of the English language, as much as it was challenging in so many ways too, because as a friend of mine said in his broadcast earlier, the English language isn't, isn't written, or written the way you, one, it's not written the way you say it, it's not phonetic, and there are so many words that sound the same but do different things, so yeah, it's not easy. And so punctuation, grammar, things like that are kind of in my, in my cells, because I grew up with that stuff. And I joked around a while ago, in fact I had a license plate on my car, oh my dear old car that I lost years ago, um, the license plates around said intellect, the ultimate aphrodisiac, because I realized in a lot of ways I'm a sapiosexual. If you know what sapiosexual is, look up the dictionary, but I'll save it the time. A sapiosexual who's turned on by intelligence. Now, I'm not turned on by brainiacs, but there's a certain language skill. Let me, let me put it this way. The president of this country, his language does not turn me on. <laughs> and I'm not meaning that politically. I'm just saying his level of language and articulation has a great deal of room for improvement in my book, personally. So that's independent of anything political, I'm just saying language, so that's just one thing. But for me personally, I thrive in a conversation which is inspiring, but also is at a raised at a certain level. And, and it's just me, that's my preference. 
So this whole dating standards thing can be very challenging because at the same time as this, and I'm speaking about this totally personally, that I, like everybody, I believe, has rules and standards of what we want in partnership. And on one level, that could be judgment. What can be looked at as judgment? Because there's a part of us that is attached to how somebody's going to be with us. We may be attached to the way that person looks, or the car they drive. Living in LA, that comes up a lot. Or because of the, the job they have, or the way they treat their family, or their personal habits, hygiene, smoking, wearing deodorant, doing the laundry, um, keeping their house clean, whatever those things are, we carry those as our standards for relationship, for dating. Well, relationship more than dating because you get to know their personal life when you get past that initial dating cycle. So when I was posting that meme, it was on that level of just the fact we have these um, standards, even down to the level of grammar and spelling. Now, I feel for my friend who was, who's going through all this stuff because of what happened with, recently for him, I'm going to get the details. But bottom line is, there are definitely people out there who have challenges with language. People, I've got friends of mine who are dyslexic, I can't even say the word myself, um, who may not be able to write, they can speak but they can't write well. That's, that's what people have as challenges. But what I'm speaking to is your personal preference for relationship, your personal preference for romance. What is it you really want for yourself? Because yes, it's okay, and as my, as my friend said last night, that if you really are a spiritually developed person, I'm talking spiritually now, you would treat the most attractive supermodel the same way you treat a homeless person. And not many of us can do that comfortably without thinking about it. It's not natural for us, because we have our own standards. And yes, some of that is judgment, and some of that also is comparisons, because in some cases, for some of us, when I compare myself against other people, yes, I'm speaking personally, I don't always come up to the level I think I should. Like I'm judging myself as not being to the same degree. You know, some of, some of the other people in my, in my arena of business, be relationship coaches, dating coaches, etc., although I'm not a dating coach per se, I look at their business success and the way they're doing their work, and I look at it with comparisons and go, I should be as good as them, but I'm not, or whatever that is. So I'm running that judgment side myself, and we all have that voice inside. At least I would say most of us have that voice inside, and not everybody, that's running judgment on ourselves. That is saying that we aren't this, or we're not that, or we should be this, or we should be that. Which can make your dating ch um, standards challenged. Because you may not even have the willingness, and this is the other reverse side of this, where you don't think you're worthy enough to date a certain level of people. So there's one perspective, which is you don't want to date people who are not up to whatever standard you're running. There's also the people you want to date because they're not down to the standard you're running. And that's the thing, is being aware of and being clear that you have these um, standards is not just um, standards and above, it's standards and below too. So recognizing that the way we run our lives, the way we choose to express ourselves in the world, but also how we choose to express ourselves in a relationship, is largely driven by those, those beliefs, those rules, those judgments, and those standards we run. Now, one thing I'm going to mention too, is that we as um, spiritual beings have a human experience, I'll put it that way, we've come through an embodiment that comes from our parents, and I'm just speaking in kind of more existential terms here, that what we have been raised environmentally by in our parents does a lot of um, foretelling of our adult life and also influences our, relation, our relationship choices too, and our academic and educational choices, since I was touching on that earlier too. I mean, I look back and realize I'm, I'm the first person in my family to get a bachelor's degree and a master's degree. So what, you know? It's something that is just the evolution of my family's lineage. My, you know, my, my parents are, I'm only third generation English. So four generations ago, there wasn't any English speaking people in my family. So there's always been this thing. So we all have our standards and rules, and we also always have our um, beliefs about what we deserve and what we won't settle for. And we're in that, it's that, it's that sort of comfort zone in a way. And actually, that's the, mm, okay. So, <laughs> another piece just dropped in. Our dating standards, in some ways, are like a comfort zone, you know? Jonathan, so now this is the kind of message I like to hear. This is the very low. Thank you. Well said. And, and 
And by the way, you don't need to copy other posts to try new things out, just for you. I know I understand. But as I said at the beginning, just, just to give context, I was I had found and I'm still finding a a bunch of statements about dating that I was finding it mostly entertaining, just to be transparent. And I thought they might provoke, which I did, responses on, <laughs> on Facebook. Again, I wasn't intending to be judging or judge or or um, influencing people's reactions that way. It was more about just provoking conversation and also to see how people think about this. So this conversation is really about the, the more uh, meta, I guess, it's a conversation about our standards we have for dating. Because that's the really what it comes down to. All those those uh, modern dating posts I was putting out for the last few days are speaking to the same thing, is what do we have as our own standards and judgments and beliefs about what we can have and what we deserve in relationship. And one piece led to that, which is, we have this bad habit, I'm speaking generally, and I do include myself, of seeing somebody the way they are now, hoping they'll never change down the road. So we get into a relationship with somebody who looks a certain way, has a certain style, and we're hoping they'll never change from that moment for the next 20, 30, 40 years, if we're pres presuming that far ahead. That's a dangerous place to play, because everything changes. And part of this is, part of this is there's two ways it happens. One is that we do mature, we age, we change. I had a lot more hair 25 years ago, which is part of that change. Although I'm kind of okay with the way I am now, but at times I was judging that, so let's be transparent. At the same time, my spiritual development and my ability to share and teach and be in front of an audience has transformed dramatically in the last, well, 10 years, and certainly actually more than that, 20 years, especially doing these broadcasts every day for the last 400 and whatever it is days. That's part of my change too, so nothing stays the same. And truth is, if you're in a relationship with somebody, you've got to be really, really clear that it will not stay the same. That the standards you may have at the beginning may be shattered, violated, transformed, raised, altered three, six months, three, six years into a relationship. So having your standards for a relationship or for dating can be working for you or against you. It really is a choice. And for me, I wouldn't say necessarily don't have any standards out there because you don't want to go married, you don't want to go on a date with an axe murderer or a narcissist if you know what they're about before you start going out with them um, because you may not want to pay that price. It really is a choice of what you want to raise. For example, um, and these are nitty gritty things but they come up a lot too, so on another level. I'm not a vegan. I know a lot of vegan women, but they won't go out with me. <laughs> I mean, that's, well, I take it back. I don't think that, I don't know all of them won't go out with me, but certainly ones I know, and I wouldn't ask them out anyway because I feel like there's this difference here and it's okay to have that. But recognizing what your preferences and your standards are, I want to be with somebody whose um, dietary choices are inclusive, not so exclusive. And but the thing is, you, you know, if someone's got allergies, like they're, they're allergic to peanuts, can you work with that? Or are you such a fanatic for peanuts, you couldn't go out with them? Again, your standards are what dictates what your choices are, and that may work for you or against you. So, um, but do you really think that some standards, as you put it, are, are, are petty? Absolutely. <laughs> yes, indeed, sir. Absolutely. And it's the thing. For me, you know, it's like I was, I was, somebody was sharing um, at this event last night that, that they would never go up with somebody who smokes, and now they're dating somebody who smokes. Very rarely, but they smoke. So it's finding that middle ground. And for me, I mean, I admit we all do. I mean, I'm, I do too have certain standards, and some of those are really like big ones. Like, I want someone who's committed to the path of growth and evolution, which for me is a big piece of my work. I want someone who's going to do that with me. That's to be transparent as well. At the same time, I probably have some things that are maybe more petty. Yes, I'll be honest. Um, I do have a preference, as I mentioned early on, about the having experience of being around, and I talk about sapiosexuality, sapiosexuality, I'm trying to say that word clearly. I know if I never can't say it properly, is a preference for me. Um, it's, I've got to be honest, to be in conversation with people who, let me call it this way, to be in intimate relationship with somebody whose language skills are challenging to me can be very hard. Friendships is not so much of an issue because again, it's that closeness. And it's the other thing, by the way, it's not, yes. <clears throat> Dating standards are usually more refined than friendship standards and usually more refined than associate standards and coworker standards. Meaning that what you take to your heart's level, intimacy relationship level, your standards may be higher, may be more refined, may be more 
critical, maybe even more, I don't say petty, but more, more um, microscopic in a way, than you are, than your list of standards are for your friendship circle or for your um, co-worker circle, for example. Although, of course, with your family, you can't, make it, you can't choose that. And, okay, I'm not getting into that one. That's another conversation entirely for another time. I'm not going to do that one. Um, <laughs> but the truth is that our standards dictate so much for our lives, and it's worthwhile once in a while. It's worthwhile, especially if you're looking to get serious about looking for a relationship, to sue some self-reflection, self-investigation. What standards have you been running that are automatic, that maybe don't work anymore, maybe don't match anymore? Again, like I mentioned about friends I know who are vegan, what if you're still running programming from when you were a one particular preference in life, whatever that was, whether it's diet or health or lifestyle or location, that now your life is different and you're still holding that old standard? So I, I highly encourage you to review what you're looking for in a relationship as a qualification. And as mentioned in the comments about, is it something that you find, are these standards you're holding petty or are they valuable? And for me, it's more like having the broad strokes be clear like they must have certain structural things in place that you definitely must have. And then the other parts that are not quite so critical can be additive and flexible, meaning that they are in there, but if the person matches all the big stuff, but some of the small stuff isn't matched, you're okay with that. Because part of this, and this is the thing I got from last night, which expanded my viewpoint, just so you know, it changed last night in this sense was, sometimes it's okay to date people who you have no intention of being in a relationship with, just to explore and get to know. Because one part is, and I did this in the talk yesterday, um, but we didn't see yesterday's talk, that was um, the dating crossroads. Why, why can't we be friends and why we can't be friends? And I talked about the, talked about, talked about the icing and the cake. That was an analogy that just dropped in yesterday. So I'd, I invite you to watch that because it was kind of good when it got to the end of it. But the recognition is, just as a piece from yesterday to today, is that if you really go into the dating arena, starting out as a friend connection first, if the dating doesn't work out, you still have friendship. But so many of us are committed to the dating path to meet somebody, go out with them, and then we're done, we go away. And it's hard to have a friendship when you just got together somebody on a level of chemistry and dating and sexuality. So one of my challenge, one of my issues with the dating apps is that's what that's the way they're set up for, is they're set up to meet somebody from that perspective only. And it's sometimes harder to build friendship from that place it can be done, but sometimes it can be harder to um, maintain the standards, sorry, to keep the standards there and then build friendship afterwards. It's easy to build friendship first and then move into romance, generally speaking. That was, that was yesterday's talk anyway. So, your standards. Are they working for you or against you? Are they up to the level you need to be or down to the level you're willing to, afraid to play above? Meaning that, and this is again, I'll say this part again, is that we tend to have this comfort zone in our dating standards where we won't date lower than that because we think we're better than. We won't date above where we are because we don't think we're, good at, we're as good as. And this is the biggest joke of all. This is, this is one of those cosmic jokes. This is where I said I was going to go deep. We, from my teaching and learning for the last 25, 30 years, our spiritual beings having a human experience. That's one of the things I learned fundamentally, which I'm still getting a handle on. So I'm learning this one too. Being spiritual beings having a human experience, we all come from the same place. And then we show up on this world and choose, choose different presentations, male, female, gay, straight, skin color variations, sexual preference variations, all that stuff. But it's all still the same, same soul level connection inside. We're all one. In which case, why do we judge? That one I'm gonna leave you with. I'm not gonna answer that one yet because I wanna play with that one for you. Try that one off a size and see how your, um, let me say this, your dating choices come from a place that really is heart-centered. This is the part. Okay, I knew there was a piece coming in. <laughs> so I'm, I'm skipping on from that one. Your dating standards if they're from up here and not from heart, they may not be serving you. There may be some rules in place that are important, but they've got to be sourced from your heart. Because, because, generally speaking, up here is where the judgments live. So if you have standards up here that aren't 
working for you, it's probably because they're up here. If you can tie these standards you've already created and see if they align with your heart, then you're in a better shape, you're in a better place, and you can actually attract more of what you want. But it starts with really getting clear, this is what I talked about three days ago, I think, about clear about your vision that really works for you. So heart-based resource, and then get clear about your standards from there. But no, again, as I mentioned, standards can be in place that are a few, several, solid, clear, important values. And then within that can be many um, minor things that would be great if they lined up, but not clearly really don't. If you go into dating like that, you're likely to be more successful, you're likely to have more fun, and you like to have more connections. And that's about it. Here in it, the lesson. Um, if this makes sense to you, I hope it does. I've, and again, if you're watching this in the replay, please put the comments in below and I'll respond afterwards. This is my daily Facebook Live number 414. Um, it will be reappearing shortly on my business page as well as on my YouTube channel. Uh, so my business page, for those who don't know what that is, is my, is my name plus dot author, so Barry Selby dot author. It also will show up on my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby. The playlist is Messages from, from the Masculine. And also, um, yes, Ego, Fear versus Love, Heart-Based, indeed. I'm glad we're on the same, see, I know we're on the same page. But I appreciate where you're coming from, and I, I appreciate what you said as well. Um, oh, and if you don't have time to watch my broadcast, but you're driving, you want to listen to me, you might want to listen to me. <laughs> I'm building out my podcast, which I'm basically putting these broadcasts onto iTunes. So if you've got a message from the masculine on iTunes, you can find me there. I've got about 30 of them up so far, and this is number 414. I've got a lot more to load up. So hopefully this will help you with your uh, relationship, dating, and self-support experience. Um, nah, no, it's a Friday, no homework tonight. Um, I wish you well. Again, if, if you watch my other broadcast, you know I give homework pretty much every day, but it's a Friday. I take the night off. I'm so generous. Um, <laughs> thank you for watching. I'll be back again tomorrow with the uh, 415th broadcast. What topic we'll have tomorrow, we'll see. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being me as always. And as always, please take care of yourselves. You deserve the best. Treat yourself like you are the best. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.